Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we'll talk about how to use the LangChain framework to train ChatGPT with your own knowledge base. It means that we can teach ChatGPT new information and some of the useful applications include a chatbot or doing competitive analysis. Let's get started. I'm using a virtual environment called LangChain-VN and we'll be installing libraries there. In the command prompt, type pip install LangChain ChromaDB. So LangChain is a framework for building applications powered by language models such as ChatGPT and Chroma is an open source embedding database. So what is embedding, you ask? In machine learning, embedding is a process of mapping high dimensional data such as text, image, or audio to lower dimensional data such as lists of numbers or sometimes called vectors. Embeddings allow machine learning algorithms easily compare whether two pieces of information are similar or not. So ChromaDB is an in-memory database for storing embeddings. Let's first look at a simple way to teach ChatGPT new information. I'm going to show you the simple way first, and then let's drill down to see what's happening behind the scene. For this demo, we'll use text copied from two Wikipedia pages. One is the Stable Diffusion page and the other is Midjourney page. I basically just copied all the text from these two pages and saved them in two separate text files. And then we'll read those two files into Python. The LangChain framework offers a variety of document loaders. You can find the complete list of the data loaders on the LangChain official website. For this demo, we'll be using the text loader. We'll create two loaders to load those two text files separately. Let's create a vector store index creator object and pass the two loaders into it. This vector store index creator does several things behind the scene and we'll talk about it just in a bit. So now we have this index, which is basically the Chroma database that contains all the embeddings for the text data. And now we can use this index to query new information that the public chat GPT wouldn't know about. Let's try this question. What is a control net? And we're able to get an answer from chat GPT. So this is something very new in the stable diffusion space, probably just came out a few months ago. And therefore the public chat GPT wouldn't have any idea what the control net is. This proves that we're able to teach chat GPT new information. Remember, under the hood, the responses are still generated by ChatGPT. And now let's ask what's mid-journey. And it seems that it also knows the answer now. Let me show you another way to ask questions using a method called query with sources, which gives the source of the information along with the answer. And let's ask this question, can you access mid-journey via a web app? So ChatGPT says that mid-journey is only accessible through a Discord bot, not a web app. And this is accurate and it also shows us the source of this information, which is pretty useful in some use cases. So that was pretty easy to train ChatGPT new information. But you see that the problem is that the vector store index creator object abstracted away a lot of the details. And therefore we lost control over how our program works. Let's try to create this vector database in another way. So there are just a few extra steps and I guarantee you it's not that complicated. Let me walk you through how the process works and what's under the hood of the vector store index creator object. If you like the video so far and haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit the like button so that more people can see this video. And I really appreciate that. I created this chart to illustrate how this process works. The vector store index creator actually wraps around this whole process. And as you can see, first step is that imagine that you have some documents, some sort of text files, and they could be large files. So the first step we need to perform is that we need to divide those large files into smaller pieces. And the reason for that is because essentially we're sending information to chat GPT to process. Currently, if you're using the GPT 3.5 turbo model, then there's a maximum limit on the number of tokens that you can send via API, which is 4,096 tokens. But we'll not be able to send the text if it's over this size. And that's why we need to divide this large file into smaller pieces. So that way we can send the information to ChatGPT for processing. We then need to convert these smaller text files into embeddings and then store into this embedding database, which is what the Chroma DB is used for. And as you can see, these are supposed to be text. Then when you convert them into embeddings, what you get is a set of vectors. Then we create this retriever, which is basically 
a language model chatbot, and we can use it as an interface to conduct semantic searches on the embedding database. So now uh, the human can ask a question to the chatbot, and the chatbot will search the database. Once they find something, it will then respond to the human. Now let's take a look at how the code works. Very similar to the previous approach where we import this text loader. And because we have two separate files, now we are creating two separate text loaders. We call it loader one, two. And now we want to actually load the text into something called a document. So let me run this. The load method will create a list of documents. And the second line, this documents plus equal is basically just appending this second document into that list. Let's see what's inside the document. And this is our first document object. And then we should have a second document object, which contains the mid journey file. And then we need to split our document into smaller pieces. So we can do that using this character text splitter object. So we created that object and then we split the document. Let me run this. This text object is also a list. There are eight items. And let me show you what the first item looks like. So this is essentially uh, the same document object, but shorter in terms of length. Remember that in our documents list, we had only two items, two documents. And now we're splitting those two documents into eight smaller documents, which corresponds to the first step here. And the second step is to convert all the text into embeddings and then store into our Chroma database. Let's run this. And we have the Chroma database ready now, so we can query the database. Now we can create this retriever object, which helps us to conduct searches on the embedding database. And we also need to create a language model to uh, power this retriever. Here we have this chain type equal to stuff. There are four different chain types, and there are stuff, map reduce, refine, map rerank. We'll talk more about the chains in another video. So chains are, as the name suggests, as you can imagine, the framework is called LandChain. So chains are one of the fundamental components of uh, the LandChain framework. And we'll have a separate tutorial just to talk about chains. Let's run this piece of code to create the retriever. And then we can try to ask some questions. So I want to use MidJourney. How do I use it? Let's ask the question. So it says MidJourney is currently only accessible through a Discord bot. And again, this is accurate like we saw previously. So that's how we can teach ChatGPT or any language model really uh, new information. And we showed how to load text information in this tutorial, but really the LandChain framework offers a variety of document loaders. As you can see, if you come to their the LandChain official website, come to indexes, go under document loaders, you will see a bunch of different document loaders here. There's this CSV loader, also the email loader, all sorts of loaders that you can play around with. This is not only limited to text files. Feel free to play around with it and train your own ChatGPT. Have fun. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.